Yeah, so all, all week we um, during the pump block we were thinking, you know, they, they have to try something. They got to try something. And um, actually going through film, uh, Coach Combs was going through the different looks and the different fake opportunities that they had. And one of them was that exact look that they showed on Saturday. So when the play happened, it's almost like, you know, is this real? Are they showing that exact look? So, you know, having that familiarity and practice with it, that was uh, you know, one of the reasons we were able to stop that play. It was just like, happened, I mean, it was at their own 10 yard line, whatever. Yeah. It was. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of shocking that I wasn't thinking, you know, from their own 12 yard line or so. I think it was a fourth and short. Yeah. But um, either way, you know, that's why we uh, that's why we practice and that's why we're ready for any such opportunity that that would come up and that's why we prepare. So. And, and yet, as the play developed, it's you and him, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, no offense, but you haven't had many moments like, no, yeah. you know, as a Buckeye mm -hmm. where it's like you and, and the game. What, what are you, you know, what are you thinking during the play and then afterwards, what are you thinking? You understand what I'm saying? You know, honestly, during the play, it's not really much of yeah. thinking. It's a lot more just, I'm just reacting, yeah. reacting to what they got. And, um, you know, like I said, that's why, we pre that's why we prepare every day and we work on our tackling and, you, know, you take that good angle and you hope that you trust your training and when you get to those sort of situations that's what you fall back on is your training and your preparation and so that's what i was um fortunately able to do and make the play and i'm i'm just glad to contribute any way we can any way i can to help the team the victory on saturdays and for for a walk on and you are not just a walk on you've mm -hmm. had a nice career but to have a moment like that how meaningful is that to you i mean it, it's it's really neat but um you know, like I said, my, my job is to help us win games on Saturdays. And, you know, when it comes to Monday, you know, you got to forget about it and you got to say, how can I help the team next Saturday? What, so, what was uh, one thing you remember from the coaching staff saying after you made the play? Or, like, anyone, like, did they say, like, good job? I mean, what was the biggest thing you remember? Like, was it Coach Meyer jumped out at you? Coach Cohen? I, I saw Coach Smith. Uh, he's one of the guys that helps run our pump lock team. And he ran down and gave me a big old high five. He's like, you know, might get you a steak dinner for this or something. <laughs> just kind of jokingly. So it was kind of fun. A lot of fun. And what, and what about just because I was there, and I know you won't bring it up, um, what about the reaction that uh, and um, Joe is going to be the, the special teams, Joe is the special teams player of the week this week for the uh, for the Buckeyes. When that was, when they showed the play, you got a pretty loud ovation. And then when you were, they, you were named the player of the week, you got a pretty loud ovation. Yeah. What was that? I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, that's, that's what you do it for is you do it for all the guys in the room and all the guys in my unit, especially in the linebacker room. So, you know, like I said, I'm just extremely, I'm happy that I'm able to contribute and help the team win in, you know, a physical way and hopefully and made a play that, you know, contribute on the scoreboard to a victory on Saturday. Hey, what is it, what, what compels a guy, what drives a guy like you? Because you play a lot of special teams. Mm -hmm. To be a walk-on kind of, you know, right. drives you every day. You understand what I mean? What has driven you for the last several years to, like, keep it up? Right. Well, you know, number one, it's the guys in my unit. Um, I'm very blessed with the linebackers that we have. We have a great group of guys coming in with Cameron Williams, Joshua Perry, and Craig Fado, who's another walk-on with me, and the development of Raekwon, Dante Booker, Chris Worley, Darren. Those are guys that's like, you know, I'd do anything for them. And also, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be right if I didn't mention my family. Um, you know, my dad was a walk-on, my brother was a walk-on, and um, you know, it's just just kind of an, an attitude that you know, you're going to bring your put your hard hat on, bring your lunch bill, and go to work every day. Mm -hmm. and that's just what it is. And no matter what your circumstances are, and if things aren't going your way, then you just got to work harder. And so that's kind of mentality you have to have is every day you just got to show up and go to work. So. Anyone in your family make a play as big as you did on Saturday? <laughs> uh, my dad started his senior year, so I think I got a, I think I got a long way to go. <laughs> so but just in a general sense, I mean. I'm sure they try to shield you guys from the outside world and what people are saying about the team, but you can't escape it entirely. I mean, what is the feeling on the team right now? Is it is it more just happy that you're five and zero, number one, and and on everything's in front of you, or is it frustration that you're not playing to your potential? I mean, we're, we're five and zero, and that's what we're um, that's what we're excited about, and we have a chance this Saturday to go six and zero. And you know, our goal is just to get better each and every week, and um, when we're able to get a victory. Then the best thing about five and zero is a chance to go six and zero, and another week to improve. So that's what we're really focused on. We're not. Once we're done with, after after yesterday, we've moved on from IU. Now we're focused all on Maryland. 
So it's getting better for Maryland. I mean, do, you, how did, oh, I mean, do you feel like this team is is getting better? Yes, yes, we're we're definitely improving, and um, you know, it's not one of those things you can look at as a final destination. You just have to look at it as a journey. You know, it's not going to be a straight uphill path. There's going to be a little bumps in the road. As long as we continue that upward trajectory, we're gonna we're gonna be just fine. We just have to keep working and coming in every day and every week and getting better. How did Cameron Williams play when y'all watch video? Uh, you watch video, right? Think, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, obviously, that was a pretty. With Raekwon out, he had to step up. I mean, how did he play on Saturday? Cam played very well. Um, I don't think there's anybody that's as prepared as and as smart as Cam is um, for that opportunity. You know, if you while the while the while, while Raekwon is in there, Cam is in there taking every single mental rep in the game. Mm -hmm. He's giving Raekwon different pointers. Cam's the smartest guy in the linebacker room, and he knows. He knows what's going to happen. He's up there with all the adjustments, and so when Cam in there, he was ready for his he was ready for his opportunity, and uh, he took advantage of it and he played very well. Would Joshua Perry be offended by what you just said that Cam's the smartest guy? No, 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 he would agree. Yeah, he <laughs> He'd probably still be offended, yeah. but he knows. But, but, yeah. But to be, you know, for, uh, for, you know, you too. I mean, to be thrust into those kind of situations in a game that was a little more desperate than a lot of people thought. I mean. Mm -hmm. you know, what, you know, as that game's going along, what are you telling yourself about what's happening? You know what I mean? I mean, it's are you a little bit, you know, I mean, surprised? When, when you're in the moment, you know, you you don't have time to think about that. You're just out there playing. But um, you know, that that's why each of us come out here every day, and that's why Cam spends so much time preparing, doing the extra things, so that when or if Raekwon goes down, he's ready to go out there and mm -hmm. keep that that level of play at the Mike linebacker position at the same level that Quan is. And so that's why um, that's what's really important for Cam. He doesn't want to let the linebackers down. He doesn't want to let the silver bullets down. And so that's why that's why he prepares the way he does and handles himself the way that he does. Hey, Joe, I know you've been asked this probably after the game and before I came here, but just to make that play in the game, what was it, what that mean to you? I mean, it was, it was really cool. Um, you know, it was just I was just glad that I could help the team in a physical way, put some points on the board on Saturday and lead them to a victory. Um, when you came here, Mm -hmm. It was always your goal and everyone's goal is a walk on to earn a scholarship mm -hmm. eventually. Um, when you came before the previous regime, maybe the route to that would have been a little bit easier because Coach Meyer fills up his classes. Have I mean, you maybe given any of that thought about just you know, the way things are working, how much more of an uphill climb am I going to get that? Well, I mean, of course, you know, as a walk on, you always think about that kind of thing. But, you know, you have to kind of grab yourself and say, you know, my job is to help us win on Saturdays in whatever capacity that is whether it's special teams, whether it's mentoring a younger guy, whatever capacity it is, I have to help this team get better and get a victory on Saturday, and that's what's most important. Plus the 82 limit they had for three years. Yeah. I mean, that kind of hurt your chances a little bit, didn't it? I mean, yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't really, like yeah. I said, I, I don't pay attention to any of that, yeah. but I, I guess it did, yeah. Jeff, <laughs> they were putting into the wind, and he chanked the one before. So when you guys go out on the field, is there any inclination at all they're going to fake a punt from their own 10-yard line or whatever it was? Is there any any thought of that? Like I said, I, I didn't think that they were going to mm. – if they are going to do a fake, I was thinking you know, more towards the middle of the field in a safer situation. But, you know, we're, we have to be ready and trained for anything. And so uh, it, I'm not going to say I was – that caught me by surprise, but I didn't. I certainly didn't expect it coming in that situation. Is your job to contain that edge and make sure he punts the football before you turn and go, or what's your job? Yeah, I mean, uh, we we got we had the block. You know, I had a different guy the block, but you know, when a certain situation arises, you have to be able to respond to that in the in the way that we're we're coached to do. And you know, part of my job, I have to ensure that the punt gets off and. When they obviously run a fake, I got to be the one guy that's going to stop it and make the play. Was there any kind of tell before that? Was there any kind of tell from them? I mean, did, like you talked about their formation, they were uh, in. I mean, no, they they were in the same formation. Yeah. I mean, the guy just or the, right when he caught the ball, he just started running. So I knew something was up. Obviously, did the line like because Kevin Wilson said after the game that like it was supposed to go right initially, and then they automated the line. And like half the team, did like half the line go left and half the line go? Was it? Did it look crazy? Or? I'm not even sure. I was just my eyes were on the punter and I saw him pull it. So, and not to say I blocked everything else out, but that's that's what that's what I was. You know, I had a pretty pretty detailed focus on that one guy. Did he say anything after you tackled him? Maybe no, him? no. I mean, I was. I kind of. I got <laughs> right. <laughs> now, Joe, right. this is the truth. Every one of the Ohio State writers that were there, and there were a lot of them, when they saw that play started screaming, fake, fake, fake. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> no, I didn't. I missed it. <laughs>
We need we need more of those on the field, you know. Press box they originally said Feta. Yeah, Feta. We look alike. You throw an eight and eight eight in the end, we kind of you know similar bodies. We look similar. Yeah. Hey Jill, I imagine Joey Bosa can't go to class without people shrugging at him. People imitate Braxton Miller's spin mm -hmm. move on campus. What's life like for you as an OSU student? Um, you know, I, I I'm not gonna say I pass in the crowd pretty well, but. Uh, I look pretty much like your normal average student, so I kind of keep my head down. And you know, when I'm at class, I go to class, and I don't. I'm not out here. I'm not here to showcase football. You know, I'm I'm an engineer and also a football player. So, and when I'm when I'm in class, I have to be an engineer and I have to be extremely focused on that. So I don't I don't get a lot of distractions that a, other players will get, which is nice. When a professor calls out Joe Berger, just. Do you see anyone do a double take? No, I mean, I, now that I'm in all my major classes, all, all, I've made friends and okay. they, they all know me. So, you know, I'm at the end, I'm just another industrial engineer there. So, or trying to be, trying to be what's one. What's your favorite nickname you're called? You know, I, I like uh, said burger and fries. What's your, what's your, what's the favorite one you've heard? Uh, that's a tough one. That's printable. That's printable, yeah. <laughs> Um, and cheese in it? I, mean, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think of a good one for you here, but I'm running out of answers. I'm sure you've heard a few. <laughs> I've heard more than a couple since I was in kindergarten. Engineering degree. Um, I'm not I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, you know, part of me wants to stay in coaching. I get a lot of uh, enjoyment out with that, but um, maybe a, maybe a consulting field or something along those lines, and maybe a project management type role. So um, I still got another year of school left, and hopefully I can figure it out, get an internship this summer. What's your connection with Urban Meyer? Because he was Cincinnati Connections, obviously, he right. had to walk on in mm -hmm. school. Is there any kind of kinship there? Um, I wouldn't say that much. You know, at the end of the day, his job is to help us, is to make sure that we win football games. And I'm not going to limit our relationship to that, to helping us win games. And he, he obviously has a very personal side to him. Um, and we have a great relationship, and I think we a mutual respect um, for how each other works. And you know, I'm, I'm certainly proud of that he's my coach, and I've learned a lot of lessons, a lot of great lessons from him. Hey Joe, what's a like responsibility Two that you might have, or a walk on might have that we might like a hidden responsibility or something you might not that the public might not know that you have to do that maybe you have to do? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there's you know. Any different responsibility as a walk-on than there is as a scholarship player, and that's one of the great things here is that they treat everyone the same. You know, when you're a freshman, you have to come in and you're going to be on the scout team, and you, I think we understand that as a walk-on. Whenever you walk on, wherever that is, and that's all part of it. But you know, that's the beauty of a place like this is they treat everybody the same, and you're going to get uh, respected for the work that you put in. So whatever level that you put in, that's the amount of respect that you're going to get back. I think a lot of people envision that a walk-on comes in. And is on the scout team and mm -hmm. uh, you know, goes through all the tough stuff with practice. You've been able to contribute to this team on the field. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you take a lot of pride in, something that means a lot to you, and has it made your time here more enjoyable? Of course. I mean, you know, that that's when, when I decided to come here, I knew the challenges that I was facing when I would arrive, and um, obviously going through them is a whole other level. But, you know, I came here with the intention of helping this team win games. And, um, um, my job is far from over, and obviously my expectations are a lot higher. And I always, whatever you, whatever I contribute, I want to contribute a lot more. And you know, I have to take my role and always keep pushing. Whoever's in front of me, I have to make them better. And whatever capacity that I play on Saturdays, I have to take full advantage of those opportunities and help the team win and do my job to an exceptional level. And you pass that. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I'm at it. Luke's uh, uh, second and seven camp. This year, you're out there running, yeah, burgers, fries. That's uh, right. No, I'm just no, I wish. No, but you're out there. I mean, have you immersed yourself into that too? I mean, getting as much out of it as you can. Yeah. From a, what does that do for you? I mean, those kind of like. Oh, those are great. I mean, you know, that's that's another reason why we do what we do, is to go to a place like the second and seven, whether it's on the field or going to schools and yeah. and reading books and or going to hospitals and visiting patients. I mean, that's. That's a hidden benefit of being an Ohio State football player is to, to see what you can do in the community and the, to have the effect that, that you have. You know, I, I don't know, except for these four or five years here, I don't know if I'll be able to have that kind of effect on somebody for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, every opportunity that, that I get or that we get as a team to go to a different place and help out with kids or, 
whoever it may be, you know, that's, that's an opportunity that we have to make this community a little bit better. And so, you know, you have to take each one of those opportunities and take a step back and realize how blessed we are in the position that we're in. When you go for a coaching job later, and think about <laughs> answering this question for a while before you answer it. Uh, do you call a fake punt from your, what was it, 12 yard? What was it, 12 yard? Would you call a fake punt from your 12 yard line, Joe Burke? What's the down distance? Fourth and whatever. Yeah. Fourth, fourth and one. Fourth and one. Fourth and I don't know. I mean, if, if, if you got it schemed up and it's going to work and you think it's going to work, I'm going for it. I'm risky. Take the shot. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm risky. Take it. Hey, Joe, why did you, you had other offers. Mm -hmm. What was it that was important about walking on? I mean, a lot of walk ons don't have offers. Mm -hmm. To have other yeah. opportunities elsewhere to have a scholarship. Why, why did coming to Ohio State so important? Um, I would definitely say some of the lure with uh, Coach Meyer definitely had a big effect on it. Um, he had a big track record of winning games, and I wanted to go to a place where football was really important, and I felt like we were going to win a lot of games and have a chance to compete for championships. And um, certainly at Ohio State, the expectation is just that. So, um, you know, when I had the opportunity at Ohio State, it was really hard to pass up, as well as the other opportunities for scholarships were really hard to pass up. But, um, you know, I think I'm extremely blessed to have the opportunity to walk on here. And, um, you know, every day you wake up, you have to appreciate that you're at a place where football really is important to everybody. And um, you're expected to win. And that's what was important to me. And that's why, that's why I came here. What have you found Last to question. be, what have you found, if seekers are maybe not the right word, what have you found to be the rudiment or rudiments to Urban Meyer's success as a head coach from the standpoint of winning? I mean, to narrow it down, to just a couple of things or one things would be, you know, a discredit to what he does yeah. in entirety. Um, you know, there's so many things that he does and it's not just it's not just from fall camp through the season. It's not just spring ball. It's the entire program, the entire culture, Coach Mick, all the academic people. I mean it's this whole entire building that leads to success that we that we hope to have. Is it like never stop? Is it intensity? What is it? I mean, yeah, it's never Pushing for the next. Right, I think that's one of the things that one of his characteristics is he's curious about you know what he can do the what we can do as a program to constantly get better, and I think that curiosity is rooted in the whole entire program, and it's always what's the next step, what's the next step, what's the next step, and that's part of that journey. Um, you know, as long as we're moving forward, we're moving the right direction, we're going to be winners in the end. Whether that's on the scoreboard or not, I don't know, but you know, as long as we're moving forward and and trying to grow, then, um, you know, we will win in the end.